Jewish, you can uh, you can self-identify uh, yourself, especially if you are active in some organization or whatnot. If not, then don't. That's okay too. Sure. Um, my name is Sean, and I'm a cannabis active uh, advocate and activist. Um, I'm a cannabis user, not medically, just recreationally. Although I do use for my own medical conditions, um, I take for anxiety and depression. Um, and we're out here trying to get the government to own up to what they need to do and stop waiting on the legislation. It needs to happen now for patients and not wait. Dispensaries are indispensable. Let me uh, ask you one question in advance here. Like, why is it that you're standing outside of the parliament grounds? Why are you not standing um, on started, the parliament grounds? We started about an hour and a half ago down on Bank Street. We amassed in front of the McDonald's. Um, from there, we walked slowly up the intersection uh, towards the parliament here. It's about maybe half a kilometer and we stopped traffic as we went and slowed the flow of traffic through the city so that the police had to come and escort us and uh, with that we got a lot of honks and a lot of people saw what was going on. From there we came up here into Parliament and we spent about another hour here in Parliament protesting while the changing of the guard was going on and then from there we've come out here while we're getting some good tourist publication. How many people you think according Woo! to your estimates came out? Sorry? How many people you think, according to your estimate, came out? Uh, I would say probably about between 30 and 40 people. And how many people you think of uh, the passengers, the passers-by, saw and noticed the cars, let's say? Uh, I would say that over 95% of them noticed. Um, if you look to your right, there's a, there's a full marijuana plant. Um, it's about four feet tall. Anybody who's driven by today so far has noticed that, and because they've noticed that, they've noticed us. Whether we are a big group of people or not, that pot plant is pretty hard to miss when you're driving down the street. And uh, isn't it that the Liberal government basically won the vote with the four million pot smokers that took up in Canada? How is it that they don't act on what they promised? Uh, well, they Where would you like to see this go? I mean, we know the... Uh, the courts in Canada basically nullified any cannabis uh, regulation 11 times. Yeah, most recently with the Allard case, and uh, that uh, that decision is actually coming out at the end of uh, August. Um, but what they've done is they've given them time to fix that in the meantime. So nothing has changed from the old regime before. It is still exactly as it was. Um, in August, they will have come up with a new system of how it's going to work, and we have absolutely no idea how that's going to work. We'd like to see some sort of home grow where medication is able to be accessed from the people themselves so they don't have to send out for Canada Post who is on strike right now. They're in a lockout and a lot of people can't receive their medicine. So it's hard with that respect. And so the Liberal government is taking their time and they're saying that they'd like to restrict and regulate, but that's not what the people want. That's not a legalization that Canadians have been fighting for for the last 20 years. Canadians want their right. They don't want what the government gives them. That's not a legalization, that's a restriction. And that's more of what Harper has been giving us. Isn't it also uh, a constitutional problem that um, a government regulation will constitute a monopoly? Well, that's how it seems right now with the licensed producers. They're saying that the licensed producers are the only people that are officially allowed to sell marijuana, and that's through the post. Anybody else, whether it be dispensaries or a caregiver, is illegal in the terms of the government. And it looks like, from the way they're terming it, will still be illegal in the future with their new system. And in that case, that is a monopoly, and that is illegal as far as Canadian law is concerned. What would you like to see happen? I would like to see a, a form of government where there's uh, a home grower, a craft business, the same way that we have craft alcohol dispensaries. People are allowed to brew their own alcohol and sell it. There's no reason the Canadians shouldn't be able to do their own on a small scale. Absolutely, there should be licenses and regulations for the people that are growing on a commercial scale of 2,000 plants and plus. They should definitely have checks and all that. There's no doubt about that. But a home grower should not be subject to grades and checks by the government just for doing their own little thing at home and providing their own medicine to themselves or for six other people that they're helping. Medicine is medicine, and it should not be told that you can't help somebody if it's helping. Do you think the uh, Liberal government is aware that uh, cannabis is a close relative to basil? Um, I don't think that they're aware of that. Not a lot of people are aware of that, actually. Do you think there needs to be more education done? That's really more the question. You know, like I remember talking to a bunch of uh, physicians and they were obviously not qualified. They were not educated to uh, help patients out. I think they are 
What is your impression on how like the medical class in Canada is prepared to administer that that new herb? You know, I mean, it's age old. We've used it for centuries and centuries, but yeah. the legalization would be a little newer. I guess. The unfortunate uh, the unfortunate effect of Harper's rule over ten years is that he's drilled it into people's minds that this is not a healthy thing. At the end of his campaign, he went as far as saying that it is, it is a detriment to people's health and their minds, that it is hurting people, which is completely untrue. So in that sense, physicians have been scared into not wanting to prescribe it. There's not a lot of information because we haven't had it legal for medical, uh, medical use for more than 15 or so years, 20 years, there hasn't been a lot of research into it. So doctors don't have that research to look at and say, yes, I feel comfortable prescribing this to you. They might come to a head and say, I agree that it might be beneficial to you, but I will not prescribe it. Find another doctor who will. And then that, cust that, uh, that patient is left looking around for doctor after doctor and ends up sp spending about $500 for a doctor visit every three months. Whoa! So that inherently is a problem. What, what is the... Peace. Peace. What is the thought out the... Uh, regulation there anyways um, should people pay for their medication themselves even so they're they're licensed or should they should, should that be cared by OHIP for example? I believe it should be cared for just like any other medication would um, unfortunately at the moment there's very few uh, health insurance companies that will take you as a smoker if you intake cannabis they take that as a drug. You are not insurable by their standards. There are very few that are starting to come out and they are allowing, but that's just a step in showing that the system is built so that cannabis users are swept under the rug and are left to, cha to take other... Uh, are left to take other medications that the government is making money off. The problem is right now, the government does not make a lot of money off of cannabis. They see this as a problem, so they're trying to regulate it and making that the licensed dispensaries are the or licensed producers, sorry, are the only people that are able to sell it. They take a cat tax cut off of that. So, in response to your question, I think that there shouldn't be any reason that people can grow their own medicine at home. If I was able to make my own oxycontin at home and not be having a lab and a whole scientific equipment that would make it hard for other people to be around me, they would have no problem with that because they would still be making money off of that. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do that because you need tens of thousands of dollars of lab equipment and it's very dangerous. It's not dangerous to grow marijuana. It's been shown that $3,000 can buy a kit that'll, grow, that'll show everything that someone needs to grow safely. More hair dryer fires have been found in, the, in Canada than there have been home grow ops that have gone on fire. So that goes to show you right there that homeowners that are looking at their grow op and saying, oh, holy shit, do I have everything wired properly, are less prone to having a fire than the person who assumes that their home is perfectly wired and plugs extension cords into every single socket. That person is more likely to have a fire. So all these governments are saying, we shouldn't have cannabis grows, people shouldn't have that kind of access to their medication because it's dangerous. If that is their only real, uh, real reason for not allowing medication to be grown at home like that, then they are just grasping at straws and there's nothing left for them to do but legalize it. What do you know about the parliamentary schedule? I mean, right now there's uh, there's uh, nobody sitting there right now, huh? So yeah, they've taken a break this, for a little bit. Is this going to be uh, debated sometime soon? Is there uh, any sessions uh, planned as on that? As far as the debates, I'm not sure, but I know that in August they need uh, by the end of August they need to come out with their decision as far as the Allard case. So that so. would be a, a regulation to really uh, well for once tax it, I suppose. Uh, well, I'm sure taxation would be in there as well. The government of Canada, the Health Canada, has a survey up for any Canadian to take um, uh, to take part in. It's a survey that asks the questions that they're discussing inside there. Um, how to regulate, whether growing should be allowed, all these other things that Canadians would like to have a voice on, they have an option to put it in there. So if anybody would like to go and fill that out, um, they just Google it on uh, Health Canada and they'll be able to find it there. Um, but yeah, at the, end of, uh, at the end of August they should have had a decision. Is so there a deadline on that input uh, period? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think Probably so. Probably at least throughout Ju July? It would be for the next few months at least. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to thank you very much for this problem. interview. Is there anything you'd like to add that uh, Canadians should be aware of? Because Canadians need to know it's that really not safe to, uh, uh, you know, have uh, cannabis in possession, grow it, um, give it to your friends smoke it in the street none of these things are safe uh, if uh, enforcement if if current even so uh, you know overruled regulations overruled by supreme courts 
uh, regulations uh, might be enforced because they are enforced, right? They are enforced and until the law changes, they've made it very clear that they will enforce the law. So. Um, Really, Canadians don't live in a free country right now. We don't. We don't. But us as Canadians, we have the right to civil disobedience, and that's what we've done here today. Um, many people had their medical licenses and lit up joints right there on the hill. The police came over and checked that they had their licenses, and there was no problem. The police are not necessarily looking to be jerks. They're trying to uphold the law. They're doing their job to the best that they can. And unfortunately, that's not something I agree with. I don't agree with the law. They may not agree with it either, but it is their job to uphold it. So until the law changes, they will uphold it. Now, I don't However, think that Canadians should sit at home and necessarily just agree with that. Get out there, call your politicians, call your mayor, come out to your parliament buildings and protest. We cannot take this sitting down. If everybody sits on their couch and waits for it to happen, go to it's the gonna, website at Health yeah, Canada yeah. and mark your input. Put your input. If you don't, if you don't put your voice out there, you don't have a right to say they didn't listen. To you. Well, again, thank you very much. Not a I problem. Think that was very informative. Thank you very much. Thanks for having time. Not a problem. Have a, Have a great day. Have a great day. Can I? Um